This video covers an introduction to matrices. So matrices, interesting topic this one, very, very applicable in real life. In the AI course, we use matrices in a couple of areas. Um, we, we use them for long-term probability in a, in a subtopic called Markov chains in topic four. We use them over in topic three to describe a transformation of an object. Uh, we call that geometric transformations. And they also come into play over in topic five uh, in, in, in differential equations. But there's a, there's a whole bunch of applications out there in the real world. I recommend maybe just reading up the Wikipedia page on, on matrices. But in its essence, a matrix, and you can see three here, matrix A, B, and C, is a concise way to store numerical data, kind of like a table, but it will always be numerical. So pulling out information from the from the real world and structuring them in the way in a structured tabular format, uh, and that is what we call a matrix. So let's progress through some important uh, information and concepts that you need to understand at the start of the matrix topic, and then later on we'll go into more advanced concepts in future videos, like uh, solving simultaneous equations or doing um, long-term probability using eigenvalues and eigenvectors. But let's just cover the basics here. Let's firstly start with how do we describe the order of a matrix? And, and I'll just quickly go through these three. So the order is how many rows the matrix has. So in this case, matrix A has two rows, multiplied by how many columns it has. So this matrix A will be a two by two. We don't actually perform the, multi the, the multiplication there, we just call it a two by two matrix. Likewise for B, B will also be a two by two. C on the other hand, slightly different, it still has two rows, but it has three columns, so this will be a two by three. So just be careful there in the order in which you write the numbers, it's always number of rows by number of columns. Okay, let's now move on to addition and subtraction. Now you can only add or subtract matrices that have the same order. So if we look above here for the order of our three matrices, I couldn't add say B plus C because it doesn't have the same order. And that'll come to light when we actually compute the addition and subtraction. So let's go ahead, I'm just gonna do one example here. I'll just do addition because subtraction is the exact same concept, uh, just subtracting instead of adding. But let's add A plus B. Now I can add these two matrices together because they are both a two by two and the resultant matrix will also be a two by two. The result will also be the same order as the two that are being added or subtracted. So that will equal, I'll set up enough room here for a two by two. Now in this top left cell or top left number here will be the two top left numbers added to each other. So four plus six. So this top left number here will be 10. Same for the top right number, that'll be two plus negative two, which is zero. The bottom left number, five plus negative four is one. And finally, three plus seven is 10. So pretty simple there. Subtraction works exactly the same, except you'll be subtracting the numbers. So for example, four take six will be negative two and so on and so on. Okay, let's look at scalar multiplication now. This is when we multiply a matrix by a number, which we call a scalar, rather than multiplying two matrices together. So as an example, let's look at three multiplied by matrix A. And we can write that as three outside of the matrix A, which is four, two, five, three. And that will equal, all we need to simply do there is just multiply this three through to every value in the matrix. So this will be uh, three times four is 12, three times two is six, three times five is 15, and then three times three is nine. So that's all there is to it there. You often see fraction scalars as well. So for example, half A, same process, you would just multiply a half or maybe 0.5 through to every value in the matrix that you're multiplying the scalar by. Okay, matrix multiplication now. This is a little bit trickier. Before we go ahead and multiply two matrices, we need to test whether we can actually multiply them together. And the way that we do that, let's let's consider, I'll just put, put it at the top here. Let's say that we're trying to multiply matrix A by matrix B. Well, underneath these two, I'm gonna write the order. So let's say two by two, and the matrix B is also two by two. If I want to multiply these two matrices, the middle numbers here need to be the same. So this is uh, that is the case in my example here, two and two, so therefore, 
I can multiply these two matrices together and the resultant matrix will be the order of the outside numbers. So my result will be a two by two. If I wanted to multiply say A by C, so there'll be two by two and a two by three, I can multiply these two matrices together because the middle two numbers are the same and my result is actually going to be a two by three. Okay, so let's go ahead and multiply matrix A by matrix B. This does take a little while. So A times B, I have already uh, tested that I can do this and I already know that the resultant order will be a two by two. What I do here, uh, I'm gonna just pause the video and write these matrices. Okay, this takes a little bit of practice, but let's focus on this top less cell here. The way that I find this number here is I multiply across the row. So across, I'll use a different color here, across the row and then down the column. So this will become, it'll be, it'll be four by six plus two by negative four. Let's now focus on the next uh, number here, the top right. Again, I go across, I'll choose a different color again, across the row and then down the column. Takes a little bit of to uh, a little bit of practice to get comfortable with this, but after a while, it, it starts you start to get a, a feel for the pattern. So this one here will be four by negative two plus two by seven. Okay, I'll just quickly finish off the other two values. This one here will be five. So again, I'm going this row now, the bottom row by the first column. This will be five by six plus three by negative four. And the bottom right value will be five by negative two plus three by seven. And that will equal, okay, this top less value will be 24 take eight is 16. Top right value will be negative eight plus 14, which is six. Bottom left value will be 30, take 12, which is 18. And the bottom right value will be negative 10 plus 21, which is 11. Okay, so there we have it. We have multiplied two two by two matrices together to get a matrix multiplication result. Okay, let's now move on to determinant and inverse. And I'm gonna focus on matrix A. We actually have formulas. Uh, there are three formulas given in the AI formula book for matrices. The first two uh, involve the determinant and the inverse. And then the third one is around finding the power of a matrix, which we focus on in a video titled Matrix Powers later on. But let's now find the determinant of matrix A. And we call that debt A, determinants of matrix A. And we can also show that in symbol form like this. And that will equal, let's have a look at the formula here. So it's AD, so it's the top left multiply the by, by, the, by the bottom right, subtract the top right multiply by the bottom left. So in our case here, this would be four times three, subtract two times five. So four times three, subtract two times five. And that is 12 take 10, which is two. Okay, so we have just found the determinant of, a, of matrix A. Let's now continue on and find the inverse. So the inverse, which we denote as, so I'll write it inverse, but we denote that as A to the power of negative one. That is equal to, let's have a look at the formula here. It's one on the determinant of A, which we just found to be two. So it'll be one on two. And then the result here, it's an interesting result. Uh, I won't go through the proof of this because it'll probably take a little bit too long. But in order to just remember it, or you can just refer to your formula booklet, the A and D are swapped. So this top left and bottom right are swapped around. And the other two values become negatives. So this will become one on the determinant of A, which is one on two outside of, let's swap our A and D around. So four and three, that'll become three and four. And our other values stay in the same position, but they turn negative. So negative two and negative five. Now we can multiply this scalar of a half through our matrix and we covered that back in uh, point three. So let's go ahead and do that. I'll just go across the page here. So if we multiply our scalar of a half through, this will be three on two, uh, negative two multiplied by a half will just be negative one. 
negative five on two, I can just write as negative five on two, and then four, a uh, half times four will just be two. So there we have it, we have just found the inverse of our matrix A. Okay, I'd just like to finish by going through some terminology with matrices that you'll see. It's important to sort of understand what these words mean. So the first one here is what is a column matrix? A column matrix is a matrix that has one column and many rows. So an example of this would be, so one column, many rows, it might be say two, five, seven. That has one column and three rows. And as you could probably predict, a row matrix will have one row and many columns. So that might be say three, eight, 12. One row, many columns, or in this case, three columns. A square matrix, now we have two examples of square matrices up above here, uh, matrices, sorry. So A and B are square matrices. That's when the order is the same. So for example, two by two, or three by three, or four by four, etc. cetera. Uh, and as you can kind of tell, they actually result in a square as opposed to a rectangle. A zero matrix, that is when all the values in the matrix are zero. So as an example of a two by two square zero matrix, that would be zero, 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 zero. And finally, the identity matrix, very important this one here, we're actually gonna deal with this in the next video involving solving simultaneous equations. That is a, That kind of acts like the digit one in matrixy land. And what that looks like is a square matrix where the diagonal top left to bottom right are ones, and every other value is a zero. So that's the example there of a two by two identity matrix and we call that I. A three by three would be one, one, one going down the diagonal top left to bottom right and all the other values are zero. Okay, that concludes our introductory video to matrices.